Thank you. Um, I also introduced it to other guys. Uh, one is uh, either drunk or sleeping uh, somewhere here. Uh, it's Damien Maître. I don't know where he is. Here? Oh, he's not drunk. And the other one is Guillaume de Lugray. He's not here because he's still a student and uh, he has to go to school. And he's the one, in fact, uh, who developed mainly the origami stuff uh, we, we will present today, which allows us to manipulate quite easily PDF to do, uh, you'll see, many, many kind of stuff. So uh, this is a short state of the art. Of the art. Uh, people are getting more and more interested in PDF, including us. And uh, the first part of this talk will be a short summary of uh, what we showed last year at uh, PACSEC conference. But there are other people also interesting in, uh, in PDF, either to uh, optimize the way they are going to find flows in the Acrobat readers and uh, many of uh, the Acrobat products, or uh, other people looking tricks to abuse uh, PDF uh, when used in uh, very special ways. So I recommend you uh, those other two. Didier Stevens' blog, which has uh, really good ideas usually, and he has uh, especially a very nice one uh, about the exploitation of the GBIC flow, uh, because you didn't have to open the file to, uh, to be exploited, so it's quite nice. Once you receive the file, it's enough. Anyway, uh, why do we care about PDF? Uh, most people know now that uh, Microsoft documents are dangerous. Uh, there are macros, there are a lot of flows in uh, Office documents. And uh, most of people believe Microsoft is evil. So usually you try to avoid Microsoft. And then you have to go to another format of document and you go to PDF. You expect it is better. We will see if, it's, if it is or not. Uh, why people usually trust PDF? It's an open document. I mean, you have lots of uh, information available about the norm, how it's supposed to work, uh, which was not the, the case for um, Office document, for instance. And uh, as this slides, for instance, it's fully static. I mean, you see the document, it's like a picture, and everybody knows a picture cannot be harmful. So a PDF cannot be harmful in the same way. Unfortunately, if it's true, it's an open uh, standard. Uh, whoops. Uh, it's not a static format. Uh-huh. <coughs> It's absolutely not a static format. Uh, we will see that there are many ways to have dynamic PDF, and uh, of course, we will use them. So the general idea about this talk is, uh, firstly, I will show you what we can do with uh, PDF language, which is basically what I showed last year, last year at uh, PACSEC. Uh, then the question was, uh, OK, now we know how to use the language PDF, but uh, it's fine. We can do funny stuff. But the most popular uh, software used to read PDF is Reader. Is there some specific issues with this one? OK, we will look into it. And uh, last point was, OK, it's very fun to uh, come in uh, Japan or in Malaysia to do conference about uh, PDF. But uh, can we do other things with PDF? For instance, improving attack. And I'll show a very nice trick for pen testers, uh, which will allow very efficient target attacks on a local network based on the use of a PDF. So this is through what you will go. So briefly, what is a PDF? This is a file, OK? It starts with a header stating this file is PDF, and it gives a version. So here we have a PDF version 1.1. One on one, one dot one. Uh, the most part of the PDF is uh, built upon with an uh, object. So you see how, uh, what, uh, what an object can look like. Uh, there are many, many kinds of objects. Objects are used to describe everything. So it can be a picture, it can be text, it can be a font, it can be whatever you imagine a document can be represented as an object. And we will go through many kind of them through this uh, presentation. And in the end are uh, two additional sections we don't care about, so <coughs> they're just here for the beauty of the slides. OK, I told you PDF is dynamic. Uh, PDF mainly is descriptive. So it says, here is a page. In this page, there is some text. This text uses this font. Uh, it has this color, and so on. So the main difference between the PDF language and all the other language uh, computer scientists are used to, uh, to program reads is that you don't have control instruction. You don't have if statement. You don't have loops. You don't have this kind of stuff. Anyway, it's uh, a dynamic language because they propose you some features. 
uh, like for instance uh, playing a movie, playing a sound. Uh, you can also do some three-dimensional uh, rendering. I don't know why, but it's available. You can do it. Uh, nobody uses it, I guess, but uh, it's here. You can launch an external program. There are some precautions uh, that are taken, but you can do it. And of course, uh, Paul, for instance, told about it uh, yesterday, uh, you can do some JavaScript. So why JavaScript in PDF? You want to display text, and you want to have JavaScript, what for? And in fact, it's probably because you don't have uh, the loops, the, if, the loop structures, the statement, and so on I told you about. You need to have an higher level language, so Java, JavaScript came in. Uh, ma many, many flows have been discovered in the JavaScript lately. And uh, what is interesting with this action is that it's the only one which is configurable, configurable sorry, in uh, the configuration file. So it's the only one you can switch on, switch off. All others are uh, non-configurable. Uh, additionally, it's important to notice that usually when you can do something in JavaScript, you can also do it natively in PDF language. So the main difference between the JavaScript and the PDF language is just the, the syntax. It's just also the if and loop statement. So when we were looking at the language PDF, we thought in uh, very bad ways of how to use it. So we focused on five directions, evasion tricks. OK, I am an attacker. I don't want to, get, uh, I don't, I don't want to go into jail, so I have to be invisible. This is the, these are the invasion tricks. So for instance, we built a PDF, which can be opened either as an image, or a JPEG image, or as a PDF file, depending on the software you are using. These kind of tricks are usually used to bypass antivirus. Uh, you can do denial of service, but usually denial of service is so easy to do so, OK? Uh, next issue, when you are an attacker, is OK, it's fine. Uh, you send your... Uh, your payload to the target, but you, you, you would like to be able to communicate with it, so you, you need input and output communication. You also would like to write and read on the remote target, and of course, execute target. So we find a way to do most of them, except the write on the target. So this was all about last year. So I will just show you a very short demo. Uh, we built two complex attacks, one targeted attack, the one I want to show you, and uh, one virus fully built in PDF using uh, things you're not supposed to use. Uh, so we, we, we report the, the things we are doing to uh, Adobe, and uh, they fix uh, the stuff in uh, April or something like that. So the version I'm using here is the one which is still vulnerable. Okay, I need to reset all the parameters. So in order to reset the configuration, so that it's on, just to show you that there is no trick, I delete everything in the registry about Adobe. And now, to be sure that it's done cleanly, OK, you have seen the EULA, which says, OK, it's the first time it's run, so the installation is clean. So. Let's take our virus. So it could be used in uh, one file, but we did it in two. You will understand why soon. And what was not supposed to be done is that you were not supposed to be able to uh, execute uh, a file which is embedded into a PDF. You can do that, but you are not supposed to be able to execute it. And if we find a way to do it. So this PDF tells me, OK, a new update is available. Let's do it. Uh, here is the first trick. Uh, you can see that it's proposing me a new update called uh, Acrobat Reader 910 update.exe. You are not supposed by default to be able to execute exe file embedded into a PDF file. So normally, this would never be executed, should never be executed in Adam. In fact, uh, so as I said, OK, do it, do the update. Uh, the trick was really easy. We use the, um, the file system in uh, Windows, and you just have to add a double dot at the end of the name of the file, and the parsing was not, no more correct. They filter the extension, they filter on the .exe, but if you change the extension to .exe double dash, then it's okay. 
it doesn't match, so execution is allowed. So here it's OK. It's just run. It tells me a signature as an issue, but in fact, uh, it's just because I'm not connected to the web right now. So let's have a look at the signature's property. Where is it? Go. Okay, usually when a file is proposing you an exe, you don't, you don't uh, execute this exe, but to abuse the user, you can see here that the PDF is, is signed with, in fact, Adobe key. If you look at the certification chain here, we use this key, which is also signed by Adobe. So this, that this just means that we found somewhere in the Adobe Reader's binary a private key, and we use it to sign uh, the binary. So this has also be uh, fixed now. Uh, you can still sign PDF with Adobe key, but uh, when you do it, you also have a small message saying, OK, this key is Adobe's property. You're not supposed to use it, but you can still use it anyway. <laughs> so that's just what we need. So here, oops. Sorry, I forgot something. The first part, in fact, the fake update uh, changed the configuration of uh, the Adobe Reader and was supposed to execute a second file. So imagine now that uh, you're on a system which is compromised. This, I, oh, I didn't open it with the right thing. You have a second payload coming now. And when you open it, you see that there is an executive uh, program which is executed without any warning this time. So now the host is fully compromised. And additionally, go to hell here. Uh, where is it? Ah. OK. I'm not used to Windows. Uh -oh. OK, it was supposed to have cloned, which was also not supposed to be possible, but I don't see the file. Anyway, I won't lose time on that, since now it has all been fixed. So let's go back here. Uh, all the slides and samples are available, and I'll give you the real letter. So this was one year ago. So what's new now? I told you uh, the first thing was uh, we wanted to look at what's in the Adobe Reader. And uh, as a matter of fact, Adobe Reader is a monster. Oops. Will you stop? No? Uh, it's about 300 megabytes. The main DLL, DLL is 20 megabytes, and you see lots of uh, connections between the various kinds of the, um, of the program. So some are for specifications, some are for cryptography. So each block here deals with a specific feature. So when you want to focus on Adobe, in fact, it's impossible, Adobe Reader, Adobe Reader, you have to focus on specific features. So that's what we choose to do. Uh, what's the security model? I told a bit about it. It's, ba it's uh, mainly based on a white and black list. So either things are authorized or not. Uh, for instance, you're not allowed to connect to a target seed. You're not allowed to execute uh, a .exe file. I told you about that. And uh, of course, this configuration is also accessible in the user directory. So if you gain in any way a way to modify this configuration file, you can do whatever you want with Adobe Reader after that. But if you're a real attacker, usually you won't be very interested in, modifi in modifying the user configuration. You just, have, you just do whatever you want. For instance, you insert a, a, a user level rootkit or whatever. So you don't have to care about uh, Adobe's configuration. So the first thing we, we look at is, that, is uh, the file encryption. Adobe is allowed to uh, encrypt the PDF, 
So basically, you don't care about the different mode. The only two which are interesting are mode 4 and mode 5. In mode 4, it's uh, the main current one, I would say. Uh, the encrypt chain is based on uh, MD5 and uh, AES. And uh, computation is quite intensive uh, to check the password. As you can see, you have to do, for instance, uh, there are two kinds of pa uh, pa passwords, but uh, we don't care about it. Uh, for the user password, the slash U, uh, you do 1 MD5 and uh, 20 RC4. Uh, but they said, OK, this is nice, this is security, this, uh, this is uh, this are known algorithm, but uh, we need something which is faster. So they created the, they created the type 5 uh, encryption, which is mainly based on AES and uh, uh, 256 bit version of AES. However, if you look at the computation, there is a big difference between type 4 and type 5. OK, type 5 was made to be fast. So an attacker can also brute force it faster. So the conclusion of uh, this comparison is that if your password is shorter than 32 bytes, you have to use type 4. Otherwise, brute force of your password will be much more easier. And that's why uh, currently most people should still use type 4. Uh, another interesting part in uh, Adobe's uh, security model is trust. By default, a PDF is just a PDF. Okay, it's not supposed to be able to do anything. But you can sign a PDF. Okay, what if a PDF is signed? Nothing. It just says, okay, I am the one who created this PDF. Fine. It gives, no, it gives you no additional privilege. So they had another feature which, which is called certification. If you have some certificate in your um, certificate in, uh, in your storage, and the PDF is signed with this certificate, you can also associate uh, properties with this certificate. For instance, you can tell, okay, if this uh, PDF is signed with such certificate, then it can connect to this website. So that's why I told you uh, a few minutes ago that uh, if an attacker can modify the user configuration, for instance, it could inject its own certificate in the user storage with many, many privileges. Then it can do whatever you want. But still, you have to inject the, uh, the attacker certificate in the user storage. But you have much better, you have usage rights. Usage rights are certificates made by uh, Adobe themselves. So when a PDF is signed by Adobe in a specific way, uh, then you can add some features to the reader, which, has, which is not supposed to have these features. So for instance, you can modify your PDF. You can, if you have a form in PDF, uh, on a PDF with usage right, you can edit this form and save it with uh, the field field. Uh, in fact, last year, we believe there was only a single key, so we get it. And we use uh, this usage right, sorry, we use this, uh, this usage right to do our virus. But uh, we searched a little bit more and we found a, we found a second key, which in fact is uh, proposed with a life cycle. And this second key allows you to uh, add additional feature, features and especially use SOAP connections. And I will show you in the end a way to use them. So, as I told you, you can no more sign a PDF with uh, Adobe's key. You can still activate usage rights even if you are not using an Adobe's product once you have these keys. But if you sign a PDF now with these keys, it, you, you've got a warning. Another very common way the reader is used is in plugin. So, uh, Paul told about it yesterday, so I won't get much into the detail because it looked much more than I did. Um, I will just show you some examples here. Okay. So for instance, you can open a PDF here and it's, I just added a, an alert box saying okay, I'm in this PDF and now I will jump to any other place. So it's all about that. Oh uh, no, I won't because I am not connected. Stay alive. Okay. 
you can embed some JavaScript into your, your PDF, so this one gathers some information. Uh, there's also different level of information. Some information, if you try to get too much information, you will, you will have a pop-up saying you are trying to get access to information on another level. For, but you can get some pretty interesting information. And as I show you, you can send, send them on the net also. So for instance, you can combine the previous one with this one. Okay, I am in this one. And here I say, okay, let's do a post request on Google. Okay, Google tell me I'm not allowed to do a post, but that's fine. Because you can imagine, for instance, to embed the, JavaScript, the previous JavaScript with gather information and then extract this information to an attacker website. Okay. So the main difference between uh, using Acrobat into a plugin or into a file like this one is the warning. And usually you don't want to have the warning because you want your attack to be silent. So for instance, if I open this connection, you see I've got some warning telling me, hey, this PDF is trying to connect to a blah, blah, blah. Okay, just for the fun of it, let's say, do it. And in this PDF, I just connect to another PDF and say, okay, download it. And it's immediately open, and this one use the launch action, action I told you about, which starts <coughs> the calculate. But each time you see you've got a warning. So mainly security in Adobe is based on white leaks, white list, black leaks, blacklist, and warnings. So mainly you have to trust users, which of course you do. Okay, uh, you can set some information about the plugin on ways to display the PDF and so on, but we don't care about them. Okay, let's get to, a, to another point. Now you want to use a PDF uh, to get information. So there are two ways. Either you want to protect the information inside the PDF, or either you want to extract the information into the PDF. Let's go into that. Let's say I'm a bad guy and I want to write the virus and uh, I want to send a bad PDF to someone, so I'd like to have the payload executed as fast as possible. Which is fine with PDF is that you have usually lots of ways to do the same things. So here are four ways to, uh, to trigger an event as soon as the PDF is open. Uh, what is quite funny is that the, one year ago the open action was really, really intensively used. And since six to eight months now, the last ways with the slash names is really used. And you can find, and I'll show you an example, some PDF which still use both of them, but the first one is broken. So I wondered, okay, is it really easy to use a PDF to hide a, a virus? Because, okay, there are many ways to uh, trigger the event, there are many ways to encode PDF, so is it easy to, um, to, uh, to use a PDF to do bad things with uh, bad contents? So I took the ACAR file, the ACAR test file for the antivirus, and uh, I submitted it to VirusTotal, and the first result was five out of 41 antivirus could detect it. I don't know why, I don't know why. They are all supposed to detect it, but they didn't. Then uh, I just do a simple manipulation. I compressed the uh, ACAR file, and I applied a filter on the ACAR file. So when the PDF will be open, the filter will be executed on the compressed file, which will then be decompressed and executed. So I submitted this PDF to the virus total again, and uh, this time we also get uh, five antivirus uh, detecting it, but it's not the same. So uh, I think it's autonium, yeah? Could not detect it anymore. Okay, that's fine. But what is funny also is that uh, it's virus buster. It could not detect the original one, but the original one, but it could detect the compressed version. I didn't get too much into that, but then I tried to chain several filters, uh, and with uh, three filters, as you can see here, only two out of 41 could detect it. And then I encrypted the file, and uh, still the two uh, same antivirus could detect it, but in fact the detection is very general. You say, okay, here there is something suspicious. Thank you for your help. 
Okay, now let's take a real life example. So I get a malicious PDF in the wild and I submit it to a virus total and results are fortunately better since, since it's uh, 11 out of 41. But as soon as you encrypt the PDF file with an empty password, the, res the results drop to 1 to 41. Don't ask me uh, which one it was, I can't remember. Uh, so when the PDF is, oh, by the way, uh, this works only with type four encryption I told you about earlier. With type five encryption, you, can't, you can no more use empty password. So if you encrypt a PDF file with uh, type four, you can put an empty password and it will be decrypted automatically when you open the file. So it's a very nice way to conceal uh, whatever you want. Okay, so it's easy to hide a virus into a PDF. That's not much of a surprise. Okay, let's, let's do the, the, the nice guy now. I receive a PDF. I'd like to know what's happened in this one. So in fact, since I learned for one year to speak PDF and to write PDF, uh, mainly there are four, five uh, things to look at. The structure of the PDF itself, it means how many objects are inside, uh, are they using object streams, are, are they using many things like that, so you look at that. Then we also look at the properties, what we call the properties of the file. Is it encrypted? Does it contain uh, attachment, for instance? We also looked at, uh, looked at the various way to trigger events, so additional action or open action, things like that. And uh, are there some actions available in this PDF? Because if there are action, it means the PDF is dynamic, and as soon as it's dynamic, there is probably an issue. So the first, uh, the first idea was very stupid. We took a PDF and we do pattern matching inside the PDF. But before doing that, we need to sanitize it. So that's the first part of uh, uh, the, library, the library we, we, we wrote. It was able to sanitize the PDF. Then we can do pat pattern matching quite uh, easily. So here is the output. Uh, you see that we use the en encrypted version here of uh, the PDF. Because, in fact, when a PDF is encrypted, not the whole file is encrypted. Uh, only the strings and the content of streams are, encrypt are, are encrypted. Strings are, for instance, data for an image, text for a page, and things like that. But all, the, um, all that makes the PDF itself is not encrypted. So, for instance, slash uh, open action will not be encrypted. It will, be, it will stay in clear text, so you're still able to analyze it. So here, it tells me the PDF is encrypted. OK, that's true. There is one open action and one name, and two JavaScript in this file. OK, this fast scan based on pattern matching is really fast. So it tells me maybe there is something you should look deeper into this file. OK, but the pattern matching is really easy to defeat. Uh, the best way is to use encryption, of course, but I told you you could uh, still understand what is in uh, the PDF. So there is a wonderful object in a PDF language, which, which is called an object stream. So an object stream is a stream which contains PDF objects. But if you, use, if you are using an object stream on an encrypted PDF, I told you earlier, that the content, the content of a stream will be encrypted. So the content of the object stream, that is the PDF itself, will be encrypted then the pattern matching cannot match, it cannot work anymore. So using object, tri object streams plus encryption, you, have almost, you can uh, almost add everything you want into a PDF. So still with our uh, library, we are able to read object streams and to part them because uh, in fact, we instantiate each object we read into the PDF file. So this is really, really slow but you get the exact match on the object in the file. So if we go back to this file, uh, this time you see the only difference is here. In fact, there is only one JavaScript. So it's time to get into the PDF itself. Here you see in green the open action. So as I told you, this trick was used, was used something like one year ago to trigger a bad JavaScript usually. Uh, with this. PDF I analyzed, what, what is fun is that in fact the open action here points to object number three and this object in fact is a page. So it's not supposed to happen. So the open action here does absolutely nothing. So the guy who created this malicious PDF probably forgot to erase this or just don't know what it means. But you see the new tricks about the name and if you follow here to the uh, object number six, which is a JavaScript, 
we go here and see that object six is names. Okay, we knew about that. This names is encrypted because it's a string I told you about, and it, get, it gets a reference to object number seven. Object no number seven here is the read JavaScript. As it's a stream, it's encrypted, but you know there is something which is really bad in this file, so you should definitely not open this file. Okay, uh, looking at the structure of the file is a good way to know if it's malicious, but if you need, for instance, to do crime investigation or things like that, uh, it's not enough. You also need to get the information from the file itself. So you have to look at the content. We used uh, two examples here. The first one is Calipari. Calipari is the name of an Italian secret agent who, we, who was killed in uh, Iraq by, by uh, the US military guys. Uh, because of this, uh, the American guys uh, decided to, to do a report and publish this report. But since it's military, it's sensitive, and since it's sensitive, there are hidden text in uh, this uh, document, and the text is hidden using black box on some part of it. The second document I used uh, is a Facebook case. Uh, there are a trial currently between Facebook and ConnectU, and, uh, another American company, and uh, they were talking in the judge office, and the uh, record was, uh, was taken, and there was sensitive information about uh, how much money Facebook really made. And uh, all people wanted to know about it. So, okay, the judge had to publish uh, the interview with uh, both uh, parts, uh, Facebook and ConnectU. So Facebook act, asked to hide the sensitive information, and uh, the Ministry of Justice said, okay, of course, we will hide it. And then they hide, they hide the information, and they publish uh, the document. And uh, uh, this time the information is hidden. Uh, in fact, the text has been uh, whitened. I'll show you the document later. So, two ways to get to the invisible content. The first one is uh, really easy. Uh, oh. Okay, this is a Calipari document I told you about. So, let's take, for instance, I don't know, big block here. You just do a very advanced feature, freshly available on iPhone, copy paste. At least if I get, yeah. And now you get the text. Yeah, I know it's very advanced trick. You, you've got to do a lot of studies to understand that. The second trick, I, fortunately, I couldn't show you because of uh, the VMware stuff. Um, OK, you cannot see the text, but you can listen to the text. So the trick is to use a very good feature, which is called Read Out Loud. You activate it, and you ask Adobe to read the PDF for you. And you just have to listen to the hidden text. So why does it work? When you, once you know how uh, PDF are working, it's quite easy. You see here, the, in blue the blue line, in fact, is uh, the black box described here. So I told you it's post script here natively. Uh, it just say, OK, put a black box on this page, on this location. Fine. But there is still here the text available. So you have the text, and you put a black box above the text. Of course, you don't see the text anymore, but it's still available in the postscript. So here, the division number is third infantry. You just have to look into the PDF. Another interesting thing when you look into PDF, especially for crime investigation, is to get information about dates and who writes this PDF <laughs> and so on. So in uh, Acrobat Reader, you have a feature. About, uh, you can get the properties of the file. So on the left here, you see what, what is displayed, and here you see it in the PDF language. So usually everything you see here is also available in the PDF itself. However, this is a new way to do it. It's called metadata. There is an old one, which is called slash info. And if you, we still look at the Calipari, Calipari document, and we look into the info field, we can find that, in fact, this report was asked uh, to be written by uh, how is it called? Robert Potter, uh, when he sent an email to Richard Tellin and telling him, hey guy, here's another Red Hat job for you. This kind of, um, of information can be quite useful. 
Let's get to Facebook. Uh, PDF is an incremental uh, file format. It means that you save a document, you make some change, you save it again. Both versions of the document are available in the same file. Long time ago, it was the same with Office document, but uh, I guess many people did the same trick as I did once. Uh, I received a, uh, a proposition from, from, from a seller, uh, and he told me, OK, you want to buy this device. The price is uh, 10,000. OK, I look in the file. It was uh, an Office document. But uh, I think that there was a previous version, version set in the same document. So I get back to the previous version. And uh, I then thought that he sold the same device to someone else for 5,000. So I call him back and say, hey, guy, why don't you make me the same price as you did to the other guy? And he asked me, hey, how do you know that? Trust me, I know you did it. OK, and I get it to the price I wanted. So it's working in the same way with uh, PDF file. There is a small difference here if you look at the first and second revision. In fact, there is three revisions in this document, but uh, for a visual effect, first and second one will be enough. If you look just here, there are some new blue lines coming. And those, in fact, have been put by the Ministry of Justice once the document has been regist reg registered. But you can combine revision and information, as I told you, about the metadata and the info stuff. So if you look, oh, so this is the difference in PDF we don't care about. If you look here at the info, the metadata is the same for all the documents. But if you look here at the slash info field, which is not supposed to be used anymore, uh, you have the dates here and here and here. And things are, are changing. So using this kind of information, you can uh, go back to the past, to the history of the file, knowing who did it, when it did it, and sometimes where it did it too. OK, so oh, I will be perfect. Uh, now I told you I wanted to use a PDF. I wanted to understand how PDF was working on uh, either plugin or in the reader. Uh, I wanted to get information from a PDF file. Now I want to uh, improve some attacks on PDF. So the first one, I won't go into the detail because uh, it has already been done. Uh, but you can do some nasty stuff. What was very surprising, I created a PDF file and uh, I opened it, I opened it, it sorry, into uh, my browser. And what happened is that it naturally sent the cookie. So what I did after that was I created a form into PDF and it fakes some seat I was logged on. I sent it to myself and as I was very stupid, I clicked on the PDF. And the PDF, as I told you, contained a form. The action was executed without me noticing anything. Why? Because the uh, cookie was sent without I knew it. So you can use PDF to uh, do some, some kind of cross-site request forgery. But web is not my stuff, so let's go to another topic. I'll do you short demo first. Uh, in this terminal, I am running uh, on a Linux platform with Metasploit. I can't remember the syntax each time. OK. Uh, the goal of this attack is to log into someone else's account. So, we will use a very well-known attack, which is called SMB relay, or pass the hash. So we slightly change some stuff. So to pass the hash, you need the hash. Let's get the hash. OK, whoops, sorry. Ah. OK, so I've, I started a fake Samba server on my Linux. And the idea is to send a malicious PDF to someone, and when, when he will open it, to get back his hash. So let's assume, ah, right. Come here. Let's assume once more I'm very stupid, which is true. And let's open this basic PDF file. OK, I open the file. Fine, nothing happens. Yeah, that's true. But you can see here, in fact, 
some ash has been captured. So now, you just have to oops, run the famous John. Uh -oh. <coughs> so it was supposed to work because everything is in the file, so I guess Oh, it's big. You did it? No. So, sorry. Capture blah blah blah. I just did it. Where is it? Okay, it was supposed to work. Sorry? I don't hear. Uh, yeah. That's why I'm looking for the Jones file, but I don't see it. Okay. So anyway, the password was foobar, which is broken quite immediately. So what's happened, in fact, with this file? When you open it, uh, so let's go back, sorry, let's go back first to the uh, SMB relay attack. The idea is to have a fake SMB server on the network, which listens, waiting for SMB connection. And once somebody tries to connect to the server, it says, hey, I'm not allowing anonymous connection. So please send me your credential. Then Windows says, oh, you want my credentials? No problem. I send you, uh, OK, but I don't want to send you my credentials like that. So please send me a challenge. OK, the server says then, I send you a challenge. But the challenge is fixed here, which is what is very often used. And then you can brute force the, uh, the challenge to get to the password. So this is how it works. The difficult part being getting the, uh, the challenge thing to the server. So how does it work? In fact, uh, when you do reference to a file starting with backslash backslash, Windows will try to connect using Samba protocol. We're using NetBIOS protocol. And uh, what, what does the reader? It's easy. You make reference to this file. Then it will use the Windows API to connect using the NetBIOS protocol. So you just have to insert in many ways, it's possible. You just have to insert a reference to the uh, backslash backslash blah blah blah. Then it will cause the uh, Windows API create, uh, create file using the NetBIOS protocol, thus sending the credentials. So how do you do this? It's really easy. You just add this to a file. And here, for instance, we use an action called go to air. This action uh, asks the current PDF file to jump to a remote file. So here we just ask to our file to, uh, to jump to a file which is uh, located on the Samba server. The Samba server tells, hey, I need your credentials. Then the client saves the credentials. And I told you about earlier that usually network connections done by Hadoop show a pop-up. Here, they don't. Why? Because I guess it's not the fault of Adobe. I mean, it's part of how Windows, Windows is working. So it's not supposed to uh, show a pop-up. But this, believe me, on, internal, uh, on an internal network is very, very efficient. I'd like to send now some uh, notes to my boss into PDF, and usually he doesn't read it anymore. I don't know why. OK, uh, I will be fully in advance. That's perfect, because the last demo won't work either. Uh, 
we have done a lot of work, especially Guillaume, uh, the one who is not here, on uh, a library in Ruby called Origami. It allows you to manipulate really easily the PDF file. Uh, so to forge, to craft them, or to analyze them, or to do whatever you want to them. We provide lots of examples. Another French guy working in Neto now is uh, using it also into uh, a software he's using, which is called Exefilter. Exefilter is some additional filtering you can add to a mail server. Uh, depending on the, on the kind of the, um, of the file, it will allow it or not. Uh, so it can pass, for instance, uh, Word document, images, or whatever. And for the PDF file, now it's using uh, origami. Uh, so currently, it's reporting us lots of bugs. So it's very interesting for us, not for Guillaume, which has, uh, who has still to study and fix bugs. And uh, last thing, one last demo. I told you PDF is a very, very powerful language. So as I hope to come back here next year, do I have some network? Perfect. So let's try to buy my ticket for next year. I told you you can do absolutely incredible things into PDF. So one night, we had drunk a bit, and we decided to do some IRC into PDF. Uh, it's freedom.com or net? net? Oops. Oh, I forgot something. So in fact, how is it using? How is it working? Uh, our PDF is using SOAP, and, uh, which is not supposed to happen, of course. And then we send request to a proxy. And this proxy then forward our connection to, uh, oops, sorry. to the remote server. So I, not, I need to start the proxy. I forgot it to do it. It's not yet user friendly. And of course, it's PDF, so it's very slow. So it's trying to connect now. I hope the connection won't go down. It's still working, it's fine. Uh oh. No, no, no. Keep the network. So it's really, really slow. Sorry? No. It runs on a remote server, which is the VMware, in fact, here. Okay, net, I had an issue yesterday evening when I tried it um, because it was so slow the connection dropped. Shit, I won't be here next year. <laughs> okay, let's try to, whoops. So in real life, of course, you don't want to use it, but uh, if you have some firewall and things like that uh, who are pissing you off, you put your PDF on your web server, you let running this proxy, and then you can do IRC quite easily. At least, it's still a work in progress. That's why I have to come back next year to prove it's working. <laughs> Yes, uh, maybe or maybe not, in fact. I know it's supposed to be slow, but not that slow. OK. So I really have to come back next year. Uh, last thing I will show. is ping pong into PDF. 
And believe me, this is really, really boring. I am in one PDF. I said, OK. Oh, now I'm in another one. Stop, stop, please. OK, you cannot stop it. So now I just have to reboot the stuff. Can do nothing. This is really painful. <laughs> That's why I keep it for the end. So, uh, what can I say? Nothing more. Uh, okay, PDF format has been uh, studied for some. Ah. For some months now, even years, uh, we can do lots of stuff be, uh, using the language itself. Things that are not supposed to happen, uh, especially things people are not expecting to happen, which is, if, of course, if, uh, very interesting when you are an attacker. Uh, what I can do also with Adobe, I'm, I'm chatting with them, uh, is that they are very slow to answer, but usually they find clever ways to fix issues. Uh, for instance, when I talked uh, with them about the uh, key issues, the private key, uh, it, I think they are, the idea they had to, uh, to add an, a message saying this key is not supposed to be used, it's clever. I don't know how, could, how they could do it in, an, in any other way. Uh, because the key has to be in uh, their software, they cannot remove it, they cannot, uh, they need it. If you want to have used it right and they need it, uh, they have to keep this key. So, the way they did it is uh, probably something they should do, and uh, they did it in a clever way. Anyway, what is also interesting with Adobe is that uh, Adobe is not only PDF, and uh, there are some uh, ways to go from PDF to Flash, and Flash from PDF, and so on. So probably next year, if IRC is working, there will be also Flash into the PDF. So sorry for the not working so well demo, and if you, ask, if you have uh, some question, it's up to you. On the floor. If you have any further questions, I'm sure you can uh, feel free to approach Frederick throughout the rest of the day. Uh, Frederick, thank you very much. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, we we'll take a quick 10 minute break and we'll be back here for the next track, uh, for the next uh, presentation. Thank you. See you shortly.